Hey guys, this is Nick and Linux has recently been put under the spotlight by the video series from Linus Tech Tips. Now, whether you agree with the conclusions of his videos or not is your choice, but I personally drew a specific conclusion from all that he explored. Sure, the Linux desktop can be more user-friendly and sure, it still has issues to solve, but there is a tendency to conflate the issue itself and the way to solve it. And for most people, it seems to be that Linux needs to be more like Windows to solve the problems that it has compared to Windows. I think that's wrong and I think Linux precisely shouldn't try to be more like Windows. But I think it should try to be more like today's sponsor, Linode. Linode is an amazing way to get your Linux server up and running. They've been voted top provider for infrastructure as a service by G2 and Trustradius, and they offer tons of one-click deployable servers. For example, Owncast, letting you run your own Twitch-like streaming server with video broadcast and chat capabilities, or Apache Guacamole, which is the easiest way to get your own fully featured Linux desktop in the cloud, accessible from anywhere in the world. If you prefer gaming, you can also start your own Valheim server on Linode, and they also have one-click servers available for CSGO, Rust, Arc, or Minecraft, among others. Now, on top of that, Linode is currently upgrading all their data centers with faster NVMe block storage, which means that every server that you currently have with them or that you plan to open with them will have access to that faster storage at no extra cost for you, which is pretty freaking amazing. Now, I personally run my own Nextcloud instance and only Office document server, both on Linode, and I couldn't be more satisfied. I can only recommend them. So if you want to give them a shot and get started, click the link in the description below and you will get a free $100 credit to start your own Linux server. Linux as an operating system is fundamentally different from Windows on a lot of levels, from its architecture to its look. There is no doubt about it. This can be confusing to people, as they would expect another OS to be structured exactly like another one. For example, the file system on Linux doesn't use C or D or E drives. It uses various folders, forward slashes to separate directories instead of the Windows backslashes. It stores user data in slash home instead of the users folder of the C drive and, and stuff like that. Some people might find this confusing. Should we change our structure to fit the one Windows users are used to in order to be more familiar for them? Of course not. A basic user will generally not need to go anywhere else in the file system than their own user directory. And people who need further access will learn by themselves how things work. Another basic example, Linux doesn't have a registry. Well, GNOME kinda has a registry, but it's a good registry that is actually human readable. Most Linux desktops, instead of a registry, store configuration options in text files. These are generally accessible through a settings application, but some of these settings aren't directly accessible through a graphical user interface. Should we make these config files more user accessible and more legible? Absolutely. Should we turn them into a registry? Absolutely not. In terms of the system's architecture, Linux is different, but different doesn't mean harder or more complex or worse. It just means different. And we shouldn't try to bend that file system or system architecture to be more like Windows. Sure, we can make it more legible and more transparent and more accessible to users, but it doesn't mean that we should make it like Windows. The most visible difference between Linux desktops and Windows is in the user interface. Whatever desktop you choose to use, it can only partially emulate what Windows looks like and how it works, even if you try your hardest to make it into a carbon copy. Familiarity in user interface is a good thing. It helps people get their bearings and find what they're looking for more easily. But there is a difference between being familiar and being a copy. Each feature, button, and option doesn't need to be in the same place as its Windows equivalent to be intuitive. Just because people got used to hit start to shut down their computer doesn't mean it was a good solution to begin with or that it should be copied. We can retain some amount of familiarity for Windows users without turning into a copy. Having buttons on the right of Windows? Sure, that helps. Do we have to follow the same order as Windows or use the same icons than they have? No, having a menu in the bottom left corner can certainly help users get started, but that doesn't mean that menu has to behave exactly like the one on Windows. There are other things that are pointless to change, like a keyboard shortcut. No one in their right mind thinks that making copy into something else than Ctrl plus C is a good idea. Well, Mac users would disagree, but I'm not talking about Mac OS here. Of course, we need to keep some conventions and not reinvent the wheel on every little detail. But we also don't have to stick to the exact way Windows does things to have a usable, user-friendly system. Let's take a 
100% random experience. Let's say that a user has an issue while installing Steam from the repos on Pop! OS. Purely random. <laughs> Is the solution to fix this to have all apps being distributed as standalone installers outside of a package manager? Of course not. The solution is to keep pushing our new packaging solutions like Flatpak or anything of that vein and keep our advantages with centralized repos and a one-stop shop for app installs, all the while gaining advantages that Windows has, which are that apps don't depend on many system libraries and can't break dependencies for other software. So when a user can't find an option, a button, or anything else in an application, the solution isn't to make that app look and feel exactly like its Windows counterpart. It's to make the required option more visible while keeping our graphical user experience. Now let's talk about choice. Windows doesn't really offer their users choice. You can't really refuse telemetry. You can't change the position of the taskbar anymore. You can't change the position of the window buttons. You can't change anything but an accent color. It's not a really customizable system. And yes, I know there are third-party tools, but a general basic user will never install these and they're not part of the default experience that Windows wants you to have, so we're not talking about them here. Linux desktops traditionally offer a lot more choice. It's not something that's inherently part of Linux. It's not a core value. It's just something that we've gotten used to. Choice can be complex for users, and once someone is confronted with too many choices, they tend to not choose at all. We, as in the Linux community, offer a lot of choice hundreds of distros, even though only 10 or so are actually meant for Linux beginners. Five or six desktop environments, tens of options for each default app, themes, icon themes, cursor themes. You can choose between a lot of stuff. This is something that's generally called fragmentation by detractors of the Linux desktop. But I personally think that this choice is a strength, if only because we now have all the tools in place to solve the single issue that fragmentation brings, which is application distribution. We have flat packs, snaps, app images, which mean that a developer can ship an app and it will run on any distro, anywhere, whatever the base. This thing, this fragmentation thing is sold. It's a thing of the past. More on that in a future video. Now, in their current incarnation though, these choices still pose a problem because they are super confusing for people. There's too much choice. Does it mean we should be like Windows and not offer any choice? One distro, one desktop, 10 colors, and that's it. Of course not. To solve the too many choices issue, the solution isn't to remove choice. It's to make choosing easier by having resources online to help people decide, to have distro and desktop combination picker websites, and generally do a better job of explaining what each thing does and who it's for. If Samsung manages to sell Android phones despite their enormous and super confusing lineup, we can sell people on a few distros and desktop environments. We just need the marketing. Linux desktops also have a very different philosophy compared to Windows. We're using an open source system with free software developed by volunteers or people being paid by companies working on open source software. Microsoft is a monolithic corporation that employs their own developers, doesn't open the source code to Windows and sells the OS to hardware partners. This means that the direction our OS and theirs might be similar in the end, but the ways to reach it are very different. When Microsoft wants a specific feature, it's basically because market research told them users wanted it, or a team lead decided that it would be cool or profitable to have. In the end, Microsoft sets the direction and the roadmap, not their users. When a Linux desktop gets a specific feature, it's generally because a volunteer decided that they needed it for themselves, or because enough users told the dev team that they wanted it. And by told the developers, I mean they told the developers that they were stupid and that their project sucks because why could you ship something that doesn't have this option, you bunch of cretins? A lot of Linux users try to apply the Microsoft way to Linux desktops. The GNOME team doesn't want to add this feature. The KDE team should focus on this thing. The thing is, this team concept is far less normalized than what you would find at Microsoft. The GNOME team is a group of volunteers and employees from various companies that work on GNOME either on their own spare time or a time period set aside by their employer so they could contribute. These are not people working a 9 to 5 exclusively on GNOME. Same goes for KDE or MATE or XFCE. The project has a vision, sure, but that vision isn't enforced and pursued by a fixed group of people working dedicated hours on that project. People come and go, contribute and then stop, work on what interests them and then pause for a while. Sure, they'll fix issues and bugs, but if they don't like a feature, they won't develop it. 
just like Microsoft wouldn't develop something they don't want, even though people are harassing them to develop it. Some people seem to think that some Linux desktops don't listen to their users, but not agreeing with a proposed feature or change doesn't mean not listening, it just means that that proposed feature or change doesn't fit the project's vision. Both Microsoft and Linux desktops have a vision that they follow, but they don't reach it in the same way. Linux desktops shouldn't try to have the same organization as Microsoft. Decisions coming from the top, the executives and managers, towards the bottom, the developers. We reach our vision through community discussions that basically everyone can take part in. Does that mean that everybody's opinion will be implemented? Of course not. The project still has a vision. The guys that made up the team will decide what they want to work on and what they want to focus on and if that fits the project or not. So it means that sometimes desktop environments don't go in the direction that we would like them to go in. But the alternative is the Microsoft way, having zero input on the direction and the stuff that gets implemented or not. Last but not least, let's talk about the ways of getting Windows versus how you would get a Linux desktop. Windows is generally pre-installed on a computer you buy. Not many people decide to buy a Windows installer or DVD and install it themselves. Linux doesn't have that luxury and comes as a download that you have to install yourself. And this is a spot where we should definitely try to be more like Windows. The only way to reach more people and to ensure that people use your OS is to be more like Windows. We need to have Linux pre-installed on computers sold at mass market retail locations. We need to. We need to copy Windows on this spot. There is no question about it. So to conclude on the topic. The fact that Windows is the most used operating system doesn't make it a gold standard for user experience. It actually does a bunch of things in a very stupid way that people just got used to over the years. They know how to do it by familiarity, not because it's designed in the right way or in a good way. Copying Windows at every turn will actually degrade our user experience instead of improving it. When faced with an issue, we can either try and fix it the Windows way, or we can find a way that fits better into our existing design and improve on what already exists. The Linux desktop will not succeed by being a carbon copy of Windows or by trying to implement Windows behaviors to fix the behaviors that users don't understand. People do not change for carbon copies of something that they already know. Why would they bother? If the only difference is a ethical philosophy that most people don't care about, why change? People change for something that is better, that offers a difference. And if that means breaking a user's habit, doing things differently, not keeping the same workarounds that Windows users have gotten used to, then so be it. We can only attract users by doing things better than what they already use, not by being a ethical copy of what they already know. So thanks to Slimbug for making this video possible. They're letting you get a 300 euros discount on the Slimbook Titan, which is their most powerful laptop with the latest Ryzen CPUs and RTX graphics in a slim and really powerful package. If you want that laptop, click the link in the description below and enter this offer code at checkout so you can get that discount. Of course, stocks will last only as long as, well, they last. So if you're interested, just click the link right now and buy that Titan now. It's a fantastic machine. So thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, subscribe, turn on notifications. And if you didn't, you can always dislike and tell me why in the comments. If you want to help me keep doing this as a day job, you can also join my Patreon subscribers or my YouTube members. Both get access to the same perks, which is a weekly podcast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!